Hey everyone, I came across a YouTube video the other day from a channel called Coolster Codes, which I'll link in the description below of this video. Um, and in it, the guy goes over the different classes that he took in OMSCS and ranks them into a tier list. I thought this was a really good way to give a high level overview of classes. And I actually planned on making a single video reviewing all the classes that I took in OMSES back when I started this channel, but it ended up just getting really long, so I made 10 separate course review videos. In those videos, I go into way more depth than I will in this video. This will kind of just serve as a high-level overview with my thoughts and feelings on the class, but if you're interested in the actual structure of classes and more details, feel free to check out those course videos on my channel. I'll rank these classes based on the following criteria. First, I'll rank them on how they're executed, which will include the structure of the class as well as how the course material is delivered. I'll also rank them based on their usefulness, and I'll give particular weight to classes that I feel are more useful for folks who come from a non-computer science undergrad, which was my background coming into OMSCS. I'll also rank these classes based on my perceived reward to effort ratio. So the first class is AI for Robotics. I took this class back in the fall of 2022. When I came into OMSCS, I had an undergrad in bioengineering and I'd also taken four computer science classes at a community college. And I really enjoyed this class. I thought that this class was really fun. It was in Python, which at the time was the language that I was most familiar with. It's super project-based, so there are exams, but they're pretty straightforward, and a lot of the grade is based around the projects. The projects are also super visual, which I really enjoyed, um, and it made it more rewarding when you actually got them to work. The one downside I can see of this course is that it is a little bit niche. When I came into OMSCS, I was actually working in robotics, um, but after a couple of classes, I switched jobs so I don't personally use a lot of this material anymore. Um, but it is also a nice introduction to some classical AI techniques. Um, but I will have to ding it a point just for not being super widely applicable uh, compared to some of the other classes that I took in OMSCS. So I'm going to go ahead and put AR for Robotics in the A tier. Uh, second class up here, Computer Networks. Um, I took this class back in the summer of 2022. Going into the class, I had heard that it was pretty easy and I knew that I wanted to take graduate intro to operating systems, which is up next. And in that class, I had heard that there were some networking concepts. So I figured that computer networks would be an easy class to take over the summer, which might give me some useful knowledge going into graduate intro to operating systems. Unfortunately, um, I didn't really like the class much. The lectures were really dry um, and the projects, there was a couple of fun ones, but overall um, the class just wasn't that engaging. There are also a bunch of resources online related to computer networks. So there are definitely better ways to learn some of this material in my opinion. Um, it is a really fundamental concept in modern software engineering and computer science. So I do have to give it points for that. Um, but other than that, I just really wasn't a fan of the execution of this course. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll put it in the C tier. Next up, we have Graduate Intro to Operating Systems. This class was definitely the most challenging that I took in OMSCS. Um, if you're interested in the details, you can go and watch the course review that I made for that. Um, but Overall, it's just a really heavy programming class uh, where most of the programming is done in C with the final project being done in C++. I think even for someone who comes in with a strong background in C, it would still take a while to complete the projects. Uh, but especially for me, not knowing C very well at all, um, the projects were definitely challenging. I thought that the lectures were really good and it kind of broke down some of the harder concepts into more manageable chunks, which I really liked. And I thought it explained some of the more challenging concepts in operating systems really well. Overall though, I will say, especially if you're coming into the course um, without a computer science undergraduate degree, or you never took an operating systems class in your computer science undergrad degree, um, this is definitely, in my opinion, a must take. Coming out of the class, I felt like a way better programmer. 
it kind of demystifies a lot of the more low-level concepts that you'll run into with modern programming languages, and it gives you an appreciation for a lot of the things that you get with modern programming languages. Um, so I definitely feel like this made me a way better software engineer. For that, I'm going to put this in the S tier. All right, next up is human-computer interaction. I took this class in the spring of 2023, and I took it along with software development process. Um, at the time, I was feeling a little bit burnt out after coming out of graduate intro to operating systems, and I had also done a job change the previous semester as well. Um, so I was just looking for two courses which weren't as programming heavy, um, but would get me farther along to completing the degree. I've actually heard that this class got refactored a little bit, um, and now there's a group project and maybe some other assignments um, that I didn't take. So my opinions might be a little bit outdated. Um, but at the time, um, you know, there was an eight page paper every week, which could get a little bit repetitive, but I do feel like overall it, uh, you know, made me understand the concepts. I liked the textbook that went along with the class. As just an aside, I never really enjoyed the peer feedback in any of the classes that I took. Um, and there was a ton of that in HCI. I just felt like a lot of times people would phone it in. When I was giving peer feedback, I never really felt like it increased my understanding of the material. Um, in HCI in particular, the TAs would release a couple of what they called exemplary essays from the previous week, which got really good grades. And I would read those and I always felt like those gave me a way better understanding than just reading some random paper, which may or may not have been well written. Um, and I never really got much out of the peer feedback that other students gave me. Um, I will say, and I mentioned this in my course review for HCI, but the material that we covered in this class is definitely super relevant to your day-to-day -day life as a software engineer. Just being able to recognize interfaces in your day-to-day -day life and understand which ones are good and which ones aren't is definitely something that I still think about. Um, even now where you know a lot of my work is designing APIs for customers to use and you know it doesn't have to be um, a front end right it can be you know a back end API and you're thinking about what makes that a good interface so because i still think about hci so much and i find it super useful in my day to day um, i will rank it pretty high um, you know i wasn't a huge fan of some of the lecture content, I felt like some of it should have been assumed knowledge where we went over just things like basic statistics. Um, and the papers did get a little bit repetitive at times. Um, so I won't put it in S tier, but because of how relevant it is in my day-to-day -day life, I'll put it in the A tier. Next up is software development process. This paired really well with HCI because they go over some similar concepts. Um, you know, the class overall is super light, which I do have to take points off for, um, but I do think it's executed pretty well. Um, I had a really good experience with the group project in this class, but you know, I know that that can be hit or miss. Um, some of the assignments I thought were weighted kind of strangely where a couple of the later assignments had a high percentage of the grade attached to them, even though they weren't a ton of effort which I think gave people some kind of unexpected uh, final grades. Um, but, you know, the class was light. Um, I definitely think it could be improved by going more in depth with some of these concepts. Um, but overall it was fun. The lectures were, I thought were, you know, pretty engaging, um, if not a little bit surface level. Uh, so I'll go ahead and I'll stick this in the B tier. Next up is Intro to Information Security. I took this back in the summer of 2023. I'd heard that you know it's a project-based class. It's relatively light. I thought that it'd make it a good candidate for you know like a fun light summer class. Um, and overall, I liked the class a lot. Um, you know, security is always going to be relevant when developing software. The grade is only based on projects, which for me was a big plus. I always really liked the classes that were project heavy. I thought they were just more fun and they really reinforce my learning. There are lectures that you can watch, but they don't tie into the projects really at all, which I'll have to take off points for. Um, but I do think that the lectures were really good and 
are definitely something that I would recommend watching if you were to take this class. It also had an open source textbook, which I really liked. I would actually love to see this implemented in all of the classes in OMSCS. It had a ton of online resources about different concepts covered in the class. And I really liked that if I wanted to take a deeper dive into any of the concepts in the class, I could go there to find some good resources. I thought that most of the projects were fun. I especially enjoyed the Capture the Flag projects. All the projects are run by different TAs and there were definitely a few duds, but overall I found the projects really fun. And given how important the material in this class is, I'll give it a high grade. And I don't think it's quite a perfect class, not as good as graduate intro to operating systems, but I'm gonna stick it in the A tier. Next up, we have high performance computer architecture. I took this in the fall 2023 semester along with global entrepreneurship. This class I thought was awesome. It's ran pretty similar to graduate intro to operating systems where there's a lecture portion and then there's a project portion. Um, kind of to compare it to graduate intro to operating systems, I would say that the lectures are in my opinion better um, but the projects are slightly worse. So the lectures are super, super comprehensive. And I think I mentioned this in my course review for HPCA, but they're definitely the, in my opinion, the best lectures of any class that I took in OMSCS. They go into a ton of different concepts and they also go really in depth. The delivery can be a little bit dry at times, but I also think that this material in general is super dry. So for being as engaging as they were, I definitely would give it points. I don't think that the projects were as good as graduate intro to operating systems. They were mostly based around a processor simulator and answers were filled out in this Word document, which had some kind of formatting issues. Um, and it's definitely not as programming heavy as GIOS, um, but I still think the material is super fundamental. I think it's given in a way that really feels like a graduate class, which I can't say for every class in OMSCS. Um, and so for that reason, I'm gonna stick it in the S tier along with GIOS. Next up, we have global entrepreneurship. Um, like I mentioned, I took this class along with HPCA and to be honest, I was just looking for an easy class to pair with it so that I could get closer to graduating. Um, when I came into the program, this class actually wasn't offered and um, you know they had offered it at this point for a couple of semesters. Um, and I think they were still really ironing out some of the kinks. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I came into OMSES with an engineering degree um, that wasn't computer science. And something that really attracted me to software engineering was the fact that you can have so much impact as a single engineer, which is definitely not something that I can say for other engineering disciplines. This definitely translates to entrepreneurship as well. Um, and so that was something, you know, that I was interested in, in the context of software engineering. So I was really excited when I saw that this class was announced. Unfortunately, I don't think that this class is executed well at all. Um, Hopefully they've improved it since I've took it, but at the time the TAs were super unresponsive and requirements for assignments would change really quickly, which is pretty unfortunate. I really liked the pre-recorded lectures that the professor gave. Um, so I would say, you know, for me, that was the highlight of the class, but other than that, I didn't really enjoy it much, um, which is kind of a shame because I was really interested in the material. So because of all this, um, I'm not gonna grade this class very high. Um, you know, it's also not a super fundamental aspect of computer science. I think for a subset of people, it is a really important aspect, but it is still a little bit niche. Um, so for that, um, I'm gonna go ahead and stick this in the D tier. Next up, we have digital marketing. I took this in the spring 2024 semester, which was my last in OMSCS, along with graduate algorithms. Um, and in contrast to global entrepreneurship, um, you know, which is another really light class that doesn't really have much to do with the fundamentals of computer science. I actually really like this class. Um, you know, I can't rank it very high because it's not very fundamental and the class itself is just super light. 
Um, I definitely spent the least amount of time of any class that I took in OMSCS. You know, the structure is very straightforward, grading's really clear, um, and I did find it, you know, actually more interesting than I expected it to. Um, so for that, I definitely will rank it higher than global entrepreneurship, but I can't go much higher than that because it is such a light class. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick it in the C tier. All right, finally we have graduate algorithms. This class definitely has quite the reputation in OMSCS, um, but I will say that I had a better time in this class than I expected. Um, you know, my take on this class is that it's definitely not easy. Um, I think it's a challenging class. Um, the structure itself is also very different than any other class that I took in OMSCS. Um, the, it's very, very exam heavy. Um, the exams are only a couple of questions and most of the grade is based on just a few free response questions on the exams. So it's definitely a stressful class. Um, to me, this is way more like a math class than anything else that I took in OMSCS. Um, and it really reminded me of the math classes that I took in my engineering undergrad. Um, with that being said, um, you know, I think if you prepare for the tests adequately, um, you could still do well. Um, it's not a perfect class. Um, you know, it takes a lot of TA feedback, given that a lot of the grade is based around free response questions. And, you know, this can definitely be hit or miss with the TA that's grading your exam. I will say that they really nailed down the administration of the class where there's regular office hours, there's extra office hours before exams. Um, they have a ton of material to help you prepare for the exams. Um, but you know, to me, I think where this class really falls down is that it's just hard for people to get in because so many of the specializations in OMSCS require it. You know, and it puts students in a tough position because you're stuck having to most likely take this class later on in OMSCS after you've already completed a bunch of classes. Um, and it's, you know, difficult. Um, it's different than a lot of the other classes that you would have taken. So it's hard to know if you'll be able to do well. Um, so, you know, to me, this class would really, really be improved by just either having a separate class, which also fulfills this prerequisite, um, you know, some other algorithms class, maybe that's more applied and less theoretical. But also on the flip side, you know, I think if you took a class like um, GIOS or HPCA and you made that required for most specializations and it was super impacted so students couldn't get into until later, um, you know, I think those classes would also have much worse reviews. Um, in addition, you know, I think that this material is super fundamental to computer science, um, right up there with um, operating systems and computer architecture. I don't think I can quite put it in S tier because, you know, the proof's in the pudding and a ton of students don't like the class. Um, but, you know, as far as like my experience in the class, um, I actually had a good time. You know, I had a really good study group. Um, I really enjoyed the office hours and being able to participate in those. Um, I felt like I really understood the material. Um, so while there was a lot of effort involved in the class, I think I got a lot out of it as well. Um, so because of all those reasons, I'm gonna go ahead and stick it in the A tier. So like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, these are all my opinions. If you agree with them or disagree with them, feel free to let me know in the comments and I'll respond down there. If there are any other videos that you'd like to see from me, feel free to let me know. I'm working on an app right now, which I made a couple of videos on, and I plan on releasing a follow-up to that pretty soon. Um, so if you're interested in that or anything else like this, um, feel free to subscribe and let me know what you'd like to see in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.